This episode is sponsored by Two Lost. Hello and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me for tonight's episode is Gregory Hershorn, the CEO and co-founder of Two Lost. Two Lost is one of the fastest growing music distribution companies in the world. The company provides SaaS solutions for independent music creators, and their distribution and publishing services currently deliver, monetize, and protect songs across the globe for over 200,000 independent artists and labels. So, Greg, great to have you join the podcast. Are you ready to jump right in? Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Rachel. Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your younger self. What one piece of advice would you like to give him on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give him from a business perspective? On a personal note, um, I think kind of ties in with business as well, but just keep working hard. I think it gets very difficult sometimes to keep your eye on the prize and um, to continue to build yourself, to build your business, um, to build, you know, to grow. And I think uh, sometimes you're not always going to have someone telling you you're on the right path and you're, you know, doing, uh, you know, the right things to get to towards your goal. So uh, just continue working hard and kind of trusting your gut that, you know, that hard work will, will pay off. Um, And for the business specifically, I think that kind of coexists, but um, the trust in your gut is, is, is key. You know, there, this is a very, uh, you know, difficult space because there isn't necessarily, you know, regulation or steps to take to, you know, go to, go to a music school. And then, you know, after music school, you get a music job and then you, you know, move up the corporate ladder every single time. Right. It's, you know, in a, in a, uh, in a, an independent music space where you're building your own company and you're, you're taking steps to, to build your company. You know, it's, it's really important to, uh, remind yourself that um, you know your goals and your objectives are are yours, and um, you need to you need to trust your gut uh, that you're you're building in the right uh, you know re- relative uh, space and, and time frame that that you've designed for yourself. So you know continue working hard, continue trusting your gut, and, and those things will pay off. Yeah, that's great advice. So before we jump into the next question, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs like yourself always venture off and, you know, they want to create their own thing, but a lot of people are unsuccessful with that because they don't really know where to start and they're kind of afraid. How did you like take the leap of faith to get started? You know, I think it's a lot of trial and error. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people have fantastic ideas. The market might not be ready for those ideas to become products or, um, you know, it might just not be executed in the same way you envisioned it. Um, I think it's important to, uh, you know, not get too, I mean, it's difficult and easy just to say, Hey, like if, if it doesn't work out, just try again. It's, it's very hard to accept sometimes that, uh, your product, or your vision, uh, won't, uh, be as successful as you initially dreamed. But I think at the core of every company and product, it's, it's the team and the, the, you know, the people and personnel that are driving uh, the innovation and experience and uh, the competitive advantage, right? So if you uh, continue to build um, yourself up and continue to understand, um, you know, where you're uh, competitively advantageous, where, where you provide value um, and, you know, garner more and more experience doing so, I do think uh, the confidence and, and, and understanding through trial and error will hopefully uh, help, you know, budding entrepreneurs uh, better uh, bring their products and visions to market successfully. Um, I do think, though, that a lot of the most successful entrepreneurs in any industry have had have had almost that like mandatory failed business. Right. So they kind of have to experience what it's like to uh, build something, hope it you know gets to um, a certain point, but then see it you know, ultimately fail, or at least not hit that certain point they're aiming for. Um, and I think that helps because it gives you a lot of, um, you know, it, it's like falling off your bike and then getting back up a little bit, right? You have to kind of understand what it's like to fall. 
to better understand what the risk would be in the future if you were to fall again, but then uh, also to know that, hey, maybe it's not so bad and I can continue to uh, you know, innovate and build. And you know, it's not black and white, right? It's not always, you know, you always just either succeed or fail. There's a lot of in between. You have bad years, you have good years, even with the same product and same business. But a lot of it is just experience, trial and error and not giving up the first time. Perseverance is key. Moving along to our second question, every industry has its dirty little secrets, and we all know that that is no different in the music industry. Sometimes people think that can be a negative thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they could be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? <laughs> so I definitely think we're fortunate to be in the entertainment industry for many reasons, but I think a lot of us... Uh, continue to remain in the entertainment industry because it's just very entertaining, right? You know, you have a lot of uh, unique aspects of this space that don't really exist in some traditional uh, industries like, you know, finance and, you know, legal and, you know, different, different, um, you know, overlapping, but, you know, kind of coexisting industries. You know, I think there's... um, one of the dirty secrets, I guess, I don't know how much of a secret it is, but I definitely think it's important to know. Um, I think a lot of people don't really understand how their this industry, or at least on a digital level, work works. You know, I think um, when I say that, when I, what I mean by that is, you know, we shifted pretty quick from you know, the core product being the same music, right? You know, we, we sell recorded music in the recorded music space and how that's consumed has definitely changed dramatically in the last couple of decades. And, you know, I think a lot of people have had to shoot from the hip, really adapt quickly and evolve quickly. And sure, there's some really smart people coming up with licensing agreements and contractual obligations for stores and services and, you know, rights holders to properly, you know, uh, continue compatibility. But, um, I think a lot of people in very high up positions at very large companies uh, are still kind of shooting from the hip and don't really understand what they're doing. And I think I think that's all right to an extent because these individuals are normally uh, very good at adapting and understanding um, how to make on the fly solid business decisions. But it's important to note that you know no one really has a, a rubric in front of them saying that this is how the next 10 years of this space are gonna look. And these are the you know X, Y, and Z goals uh, and objectives that we're gonna have to hit. They have a general understanding, but you know this space moves so quickly. Um, you know, there's so many new uh, exciting and scary technologies coming about you know AI being one of the relevant ones right now and what that's gonna do to the music space. And I just think a lot of people don't know um, what to do. A lot of people are just gonna try to figure this stuff out on the fly. And there's some of the smartest, but also you know, most powerful people in this space. And uh, they're, they're kind of just, you know like I said earlier in this conversation, kind of trusting their gut. Um, and I think that's important because that leaves a lot of opportunity for uh, you know budding industry uh, individuals, people that are just getting started to know that, you know, they, they can make a difference, uh, in their earlier years in in this industry more so than I think they can in any other industry, because there's so much room for innovation. There's so much room for, uh, product opportunity, especially now as those products are evolving so quickly of how we consume our music. So, um, yeah, I just think it's important for everyone to realize that at the highest levels, I've spoken to people uh, when we were setting up and configuring our company, uh, you know, at the highest levels of all these stores and services and rights holders. And, you know, there's 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 a lot of confusion and just, uh, you know, lack of understanding. And I think that's all right, uh, because they've they've built their careers and their experience in a very different space in a very different time period. And they're just, you know, learning this stuff on the fly, just like a lot of us. Yeah, that's a great point. Speaking of the space moving super quick, obviously there are several distribution services within the industry. How do you maintain a competitive edge? Is it just the adaptability? I think that's that's part of it. I think there's a lot of uh, factors. I think uh, our intuitiveness, our thoughtfulness with our product, you know, what we built has um, you know quickly evolved into one of the uh, highest adopted you know, services for rights holders, independent rights holders specifically. And I think that's due to the fact that we have a very thoughtful product that puts a lot of um, our, 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 we put a lot of our time and effort into building 
uh, you know, intuitive solutions that maybe some of these other distribution companies haven't necessarily considered. Um, a lot of our competitors have also had founding teams exit in the last couple of years. And I think their motivation to, you know, you know, increase the functionality and um, optimize their platforms have, have been less of a primary focus. It's more of like PE and, you know, exiting and, you know, kind of uh, scaling the, the user base of their products and less about, you know, incorporating new technologies and services and functionality, which I think is super important for us to continue to do. As I just mentioned, there's so many new budding platforms and, and services and technologies out there that you know are super compatible at the root uh, with, with your distribution service. And I think what we've been doing over at Two Lost is making sure that we are extremely thoughtful about how we integrate those technologies into our service to make our user experience as uh, exceptional as, as it currently is. And as I you know, continue to adopt new services, um, um, and functionalities and we program out the platform. Um, you know, I think people come and they end up, you know, staying and retaining with us a lot longer than uh, some of our counterparts in the space. And I think that's because they see the evolution of the product in real time. They see weekly updates. They see um, that we really care about making sure our technology is, is the, you know, industry, uh, industry's best. That's great. Final question. Throughout your career thus far, I can only imagine that you've been asked plenty of questions, whether it was for an industry conference, the media, or perhaps a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, there has to be one that you've never been asked, but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? That's a good question. Um, I think one that I think people should ask everybody in, in any industry more is, um, regardless of, you know, your experience level, how long you've been in the space, you know, I think, uh, what can you improve on? You know, I think it's a weird question to probably ask people, but I, I, I like to think about it a lot for myself. Um, and one of the things I definitely been thinking about recently um, is, uh, you know, just like work-life balance. I think we have uh, a very, you know, unique space as, as entrepreneurs. We don't have nine to five jobs, right? We have uh, you know, you work as much as you can until you sleep type of mindset. You know, I, I love what I do. And I it kind of unfortunately and fortunately blends in with my other aspects of my life, probably more than it would if it was just a nine to five job where I was clocking in for a salary. Right. So I, I, I definitely think uh, what can I improve on is is something that I think I need to ask myself every couple of years, even more frequently than that. And hopefully it, 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 those those, you know, answers change over time as well. But I think right now, the big thing I'm trying to work on, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 25, I live in a big city, I have, you know, friends and family around me, but, you know, work-life balance is definitely something that I think is an ongoing uh, battle that might never end. And I might have to always <laughs> kind of figure out how to, you know, make the most of you know, my time, but I definitely think this industry, especially, it can be really demanding on off hours. And we find ourselves working till, you know, 2 a.m. to get, you know, that release live because it was turned in 30 minutes before, right? And he's an A list artist that, you know, you really want to make sure has a stellar experience. But, you know, you find yourself doing <laughs> these like odd hour work, you know, in jobs. And, and I, I think uh, you know, figuring out, how to make sure you're making time for other things that matter in your life are, are super, super important. So before we close it out, what's one thing that you've done in like the last six months to help you do that? I have started, I got a second phone. So that's one, <laughs> one thing that I started. <laughs> I started isolating uh, some of my work relations and, uh, and emails and um, communications to one phone. And then I typically, I try to, I can do a lot better with this, but I do try to turn that phone off at the end of the workday and then turn on my other phone, which I've only given that phone number out to a, a select few individuals, mostly family members. Um, and hopefully if anyone hears this and they don't have that number, they don't go bombard me for it, but <laughs> it is something that I intend to keep with a select few people. So I can kind of figure out how to prioritize spending more time with family and, and close friends. And, and I think that's, a, like I said, an ongoing thing that I'll probably always have to deal with. You know, I run a busy company and we have a lot of different objectives that come up and, and I have to uh, make sure I'm available, but the, the second phone, uh, you know, uh, definitely has improved it. I think also, you know, I, I brought in a new assistant who's been fabulous and, you know, having her, uh, you know, 
uh, help with scheduling and making sure that she's aware of my priority to, you know, make sure I can have that work-life balance has, has definitely been helpful too. But I think, you know, a lot easier entry for a lot of people to start, you know, uh, you know, balancing out their work and their life is, is getting a second phone. It doesn't have to be, you know, two fancy phones either. It could be you know, a, a burner phone that you <laughs> just give to your mom and dad, you know? So um, I definitely think that has been at the very least a more thoughtful way to uh, help me uh, be more aware that I need to be, you know, doing better at this. Totally. Well, Greg, thanks so much for joining me tonight and to everyone listening. Hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Stay tuned for next week of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. This episode is sponsored by Two Lost.